Today I'm going to show you how to take apart, clean, and retime your, your servo assembly. Uh, this one is a 5KM servo. It's off of 06 Yamaha Grizzly. You'll find this particular unit on a lot of other Yamahas. It seems to be the one that, that goes bad most frequently. Uh, pretty simple process I'm going to show you here. You can check out my website, 501 parts.com I have a lot of other how-to videos and also have the motors that go inside here if you need one of those. The well, first thing I do is I keep my plugs plugged in and I obviously have all this cut loose just for where I can get to it and work with it a little better. Uh, keep everything plugged in, keep your key off. I have the screws out already just to make things quick. The first thing you do just split this apart and if you want to clean it you see there's some yellow grease in here. You can wipe this out. Put some dielectric grease back in there and you'll be good to go. Uh, set this side of the case apart. You can, you can pull this off here. Pull this gear out. See this, this will come apart also. Take that out. Take this out. Set that aside. The only thing left is a motor. You can pull these two screws out. Take that. I'm going to leave that in today. To get this assembly out, I'll turn it over. You get a circlip on this gear. Let's pop this circlip out. Pop that off. Circle clip. Slide the gear off. Set that aside. And then you can pull this out. And that's as far as you can break it down, other than pulling the motor out. And you can clean this gunk off, like I said, put some dielectric grease on it. Uh, to put it back together, if you notice these three three prongs right here, and these three prongs right here. And if you look at it from this side, you can kind of see the, the dots right here. That's what you want to look at when you're when you're timing it. Stick this back together. If you see you got your second and third prong here, and your first and second dot, you want to line those up just like that. That's going to put you in two-wheel drive. That one lined up, that one lined up. Good to go. <clears throat> Next thing, you can stick this back on. Just pop into place. I'm going to flip it back over. Stick my gear back on. My circlip. Small flathead works great for doing that. Pop back on. <clears throat> you can see it's got a flat side. Put the flat side down. And stick this inside of it. There's a hole there that it fits inside. It meshes with the worm gear. Okay. Then before you put the top of the case back on, you want to so you can free spin this. You want to make sure that those two dots two dots are lined up right here they were good to go just put the case back on with your plugs in you don't have to put the screws back in to, to test it I always test it before I put it back on you see it pop back together now it's going to be mounted, It'll be mounted like this. So now I'm going to turn my key on. Like I said, my button's in two-wheel drive right now. The unit shouldn't be moving, so I'm going to hit four-wheel drive, and stiff lock. Okay. Back to four-wheel drive. Back to two-wheel drive. That lets you know it's good to go. Now. You can keep your button in two-wheel drive. Make sure, again, your slide gear is all the way to the left. 
you can unplug all this now, bolt it back together and install it. Fill it with gear oil and, and you're back on the trails. Now for some of these units have timing marks on the back here. If you're lucky you'll have these if you happen to get it out of time. This one does not. So you'd have to do it the way I just showed you. But some of them you'll have a mark on one of these these webs and, and you'll have a mark on the gear. And if you pull this top side of the case off you can spin this freely. You line those two marks up and that'll put you in two-wheel drive.